Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL. Today, we're trying out another new mod, and this time, it's again created by the fantastic Kiev, who created our Obsidian Cruiser we tried very early on. Interestingly enough, this ship that we're going to be playing with today is one I really, really, really wanted to play with at the very beginning when I was starting to make my mod videos. I was waiting for it to be completed, though, because it's part of a larger scheme, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it looks like that's been kind of put on a side burner for now, so I decided it's time to come back and actually play this thing, because I've been looking forward to it for some time. Let's hop in here to our new game menu and take a look at our ship in question. Mm, for the Zoltan Type B, we have the Incursor Archon. Lower the volume here a little bit, because this song does get quite loud, while it is fantastic. So, here we have it without the rooms. It is a gorgeous ship. I absolutely love it. It looks fantastic. I like the clean palette. It's got black, white, and yellow, and some grays and stuff. I like the clean, crisp lines. I like the look of the weapons. The light weapons look really cool on it. It looks really good, I have to say. It's a fantastic looking chip mod, but the idea of it doesn't stop there. The idea behind this mod is it's a total conversion mod, which means it replaces a lot of different elements of the thing, in case you weren't aware of what that means. And the whole idea of it is that this is what happens after the Rebels win the war. So the Federation is defeated by the flagship, and, or rather, even if the flagship's destroyed, the Federation still gets overrun. And the Incursor Archon is one of the ships of the Rebel fleet, after, as they are sort of, you know, retaking the world, as like, uh, the galaxy, rather, I think is the idea. Uh, it's very interesting sounding, basically a totally new way of looking at the game, would involve a whole lot of changes, and it kind of got put aside for now, which is unfortunate, but very cool weapon nonetheless. Quick weapon mod, nonetheless. One of the coolest things about it, though, is the music. We have a track here that's different, and the rest of the music, I believe, is the same in game. But, Keeve has been making a whole ton of new tracks. So, on the screen right now will be a whole bunch of annotations so that you can go and listen to those tracks and do it. Pause this video, go listen to a couple of those songs, come back to this video, watch more of this, go back and listen to those at the end. They're really good. I really like how they mix in with the whole FTL feel. Some of them are quite different, which is pretty cool. I like them. They're good stuff. Go listen to them. Keep needs more attention on his YouTube channel anyway, because he makes amazing music. Now, what else have we got going on here? Well, this ship is pretty interesting. Let's show the rooms again. It's a little bit off-putting for me that the rooms aren't symmetrical, but we can, we can look past that for now. It's a really gorgeous ship, so I don't mind too much. The weapons themselves are fairly interesting, though. We start with an arc beam. The descriptions are a little bit long, too, because they actually went into a fairly large description on each of them. The arc beam is a... basically a room and personnel fryer. It starts fires in rooms, does system damage, and hurts the people in the rooms, but does no actual damage to the hull. So, it's fairly useful and very powerful, but it will not destroy ships for you, which may or may not be a good thing. If we can get a rock boarding party with this, this might actually be incredibly powerful. We also have our Aurora Mass Cannon. The Aurora Mass Cannon is basically a single shot, kind of a railgun style weapon that fires directly through any amount of shields, does three damage, has a good chance of starting fires, and a good chance of punching holes in your ship. However, it does require missiles, as do the, the two following weapons. So this is a bit of a missile dependency on here on this ship. This third weapon is the Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon, which is effectively a minigun. It is a short charge time, only takes 10 seconds, shoots four individual shots, which only do one damage each, but also requires a missile to fire, which is fairly interesting. We also have the Bolline EMP rocket. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing the first word correctly or not, but that's how I'm going to say it for the rest of the, the series, so I hope you don't mind. Basically, it's an ion rocket. It does one ion damage, it can only pierce one shield, but that basically means it has the potential to do, I believe, up to two or three total ion damage. Basically, it's a pretty neat disabling weapon, but not quite as powerful as the others, which is why it only takes two power to actually fire. So, that's all interesting stuff. We also have a Zoltan shield, because this is, of course, a Zoltan Type B. And there are a couple of little interesting things here, like we start with uh, one full layer of shield, we start with the first two blocks in our dodge, but that's it and various similar things such as that. We don't have a teleporter. We do not have a, uh, what do you call them? We have an upgraded sensors too, which is interesting, because it means you can actually take advantage of the fires that you start. You can enjoy to watch them. But yeah, it's a very cool ship. We get around to renaming it. We can actually get trying. So we're going to just add VSS to the front of this, because I like the name, the VSS Archon. It's pretty cool. And since this is a very power-centric ship, you can see the power lines flowing on the outside with the glowing yellow lights, we're going to rename our Zoltan, we're obviously providing some of that power, 
to something that feels appropriate for that. So we're going to have flux and flow on board this ship, and they're going to take us from one end of the galaxy to the other, if we can help it. So, I'd say it's about time to get started. We're here playing on normal. Let's jump into the game. Here we are. The data we carry is vital for the remaining Federation fleet. We'll need supplies for our journey, so we need to make sure we explore everywhere we can, of course. And we'll need to get away before those rebels catch us. Pretty standard stuff. Because, of course, like I said, this, th these events haven't been changed in any way yet. Turning on some of our classic weapons here. We got our arc beam and our bull-eyed rockets. By classic weapons, I mean entirely new weapons. But that's good, too, isn't it? Let's send Flo over here to the weapon system, and we will power up our... Engines, I guess. We kind of want to have that fast fire rate because our weapons are a bit slow, especially the arc beam, which is our primary way of fighting our enemies in this early stage in the game. So hopefully it'll work out from th in, in, bleh, 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 in our favor. Hooey! Let's get jumping and hope we find some people and not some robots. This ship is great, absolutely great at fighting non-Zoltan, non-drone enemies. If we find drone enemies, we're going to be wind up winding up wasting a lot of rockets. As we arrive in the system, we're hailed by Loyalist Settlement. Upon learning of our quest, they offer us some supplies. That's a good start. Three fuel, a free missile, and twelve scrap. Awesome. Sounds good to me. We have twenty scrap left. I think what we'll do here, even though we have our Zoltan Shield, we're not really great at dodging yet. So what we're going to go for is we'll go for uh, level two shields, and then we'll pump up our dodge as per standard procedures, because that will make us a lot harder for them to kill. It should work out for us fairly well. We'll have to wait and see how it goes, though. Oh, good. Exactly what I didn't want to have. Our arrival is greeted by numerous computer alerts. The nearby automated rebel scout has deployed a virus and disrupted our shields. Hopefully it won't cause further problems before we can destroy it. By that you mean it actually turned our shields off. We only have two bars of shields, dang it. Oh, boy. This is going to be a long fight. All right, we're going to bowline them in the shields, most likely. And then we're going to have to arc beam them somewhere nasty. Or we could not use the bolide rockets. We could just use... How about we use... Yeah, we'll do this. Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon. Probably our best choice at this stage. Does a lot of damage and has a pretty good chance of actually smacking our enemies about. So we're going to try and hit them in... Oh, I don't even know where to aim at them first. First missile salvo is going... There we go. Sun Fury... Oh, come on. There we go. One shot hit them in the helm. That's all we needed at least. We need to make sure we don't miss on the other shots. Next Sun Fury round is going into the weapons. Make sure they can't actually hurt us because our weapons are actually offline. There we go. Taking them out. And next Sun Fury salvo is going to go somewhere else. We can't kill them even in one more of these. Ugh, this is bad. Wasting so many missiles. There we go. Take the shields out and we only need to hit them one more time. Let's aim at the engines, I guess, for good luck. And we will Sun Fury them into an early grave. Zicka, 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 zicka. It's a pretty good weapon. The fast firing rate is pretty powerful, but the fact it takes missiles every shot makes it kind of counterbalanced there. Ship explodes, giving us two fuel, drone part, and 13 scrap. No missiles to replace the ones we had to fire at them to take them out, which is a little bit unfortunate, but not the end of the world. We'll have to wait and see how it goes, though. 35 scrap could be better. Could be better. We still need 50 to power up our shields again. And let's keep moving. Hopefully we find some non-robots to fight, because that's what we're good at. And also non Sultan would be great. A missile shoots across our bow and the jump completes. Our scans quickly reveal a ship with pirate markings pursuing an unknown vessel. The pirate hails us, saying they weren't ready for this and weren't expecting any company. And if we stay out of it, we could profit. Well, we may actually just do this because they're giving us two missiles, a drone part, and eight scrap here. And it's going to take us all day to fight them down. It looks like they have an ion weapon and a pike beam, which will absolutely ravage our ship. And it's, it's just not worth it. So for this one time, we're accepting the bribe. Well done, friends. We both came out of this Reacher, yes. I've come out of this much less dead. Zoltan and drones. The worst two things we can fight in this ship. The first two things we fought in this ship. Come on, random number generator. Work in my favor here, please. What do we find here? We arrive to find a number of ships convening around a station. We tune into their unencrypted communications and overhear half of their conversation. It seems they need to take possession of an enemy ship intact. Well, we have weapons that are perfect for that. Let's offer our services. Oh, come on. I have a... Super Fire Mega Beam. They briefly scan our ship and inform us we're not properly equipped. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. We have an Ion Weapon and a Mega Beam. How are we not properly equipped? Ah, uh, that's too bad. Well, nothing we can do about that, really. We're just going to have to jump off and see if we can't do anything else. We find a Rebel Automated Scout floating near this beacon. Despite being in pristine condition, it appears to be deactivated. And as always, we're going to attempt to download the ship's data stores and hope for the best. We were able to pull all the ship's data but the sector out. Our map has been updated. We get two missiles, a drone part, and ten scrap. Well, that worked out great. We're going to use that extra money to power up our shields in a minute, but we don't have the power to actually run it yet, so we're not going to worry about it. We could head around this way. I'm not sure if we can actually spend enough jumps doing that, though. So what we're going to do first, we'll head over here and then work our way around that way. Hopefully there's something at this beacon and it's not actually empty. Although we'll find out when we arrive, I'm sure. We come out of the beacon to 
We come out of the jump to see laser blasts coming from the other side of the beacon. It looks like someone's under attack by pirates. Well, let's help those civilians! We power up weapons and engage the pirates. Oh, good. These guys are going to get absolutely blasted by our arc beam. Absolutely ravaged. Especially because they're both mantis and can't repair to save their lives. Which is what they'll be attempting. So, we'll be bolighting them in a second and then murdering them with the arc beam. Oh, arc beam. You're such a great weapon. So, we're going to bolide rocket those guys in the shields right about now. Hopefully this hits. If it misses, it'll be a bit disappointing. Very cool rocket model, too, if you happen to catch that there. We're going to burn them through the, sh the weapons, the shields, and we're also going to hit them in the oxygen. Just to make things really nasty for them, because now they're doomed. Even if we don't kill them directly with our arc beam, they are now doomed because of the fact that they can never repair this. Meaning they're going to eventually run out of oxygen. Also, the fact that they can never repair their shields fast enough to put the fires out before we can destroy them is looking pretty good for us, too. Arc beam into the helm, also fry the, Zo the, the mantis, and they're going to burn up. Crispy, crispy mantis kebabs. No more life signs than on the pirate ship. We get a missile at drone part 22 scrap and hasten to contact the civilians, where we find that they ran away. Well, awesome. That's okay, though. We did get a pretty good reward from the Mantis, so it's hard to really complain. I just did, but it's hard to do it. We're going to jump over here to this unvisited beacon, and let's see what we find. Hopefully it's not either of the things I mentioned before. No, it isn't. We stumble across a forward scout of the Rebel fleet. They've got a teleporter, and they're trying to charge up their FTL drive to get away. Well, we can't have that now, can we? What we're going to do is we're going to bolide them in the shields. We're going to arc beam them through the oxygen shields, engines, and weapons, which should bring this guy out of the helm, meaning they're no longer going to be running away, and it should also prevent them from doing anything nasty like happening to teleport on board. So we're going to bolide them in the shields right about now. Probably could have fired that a bit earlier, and we hit them. Fantastic. Hit them right across. No, oops. Came in this badly. Aim in this badly. Aim right through there. There we go. It's a little bit shorter than a halberd beam or those other uh, general length beams, so I'm not quite used to the length. Fire. There we go. Shields are on fire. Engines are on fire. Weapons are on fire. Oxygen's on fire. Everything's on fire, and that's how I like it. They'll probably be able to put out these fires before we can stop them from repairing the shields by setting them on fire again. We will try, but it's not very likely because they will have three people repairing it, and it's going to repair right in time. Yes, go, 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 go! Yeah, perfect! Now they're doomed. They have no way of attacking us because their weapons are burned, they have no way of healing because they have no medbay, and they're literally doomed now. They can't even teleport on board because our shields are still intact. We're going to fry them with the arc beam right through those rooms, make sure those guys are dead. Kapow! Very fun. I like this weapon. The ship goes silent, and we're relieved to know that we're still one step ahead of the fleet, getting three fuel, two missiles, and 15 scrap. Looking good. 90 scrap total. Pretty darn solid. We're going to use that to power up our shields if we need to, but I think we might even just go for our engines first. Because we have all this money, I don't know, it's hard to say. Maybe what we'll do is we'll buy it now, and if we need to put the power into the engines later, we'll have that option. It's good to have that security blanket, though, because once that Zoltan shield goes down, the ship is pretty fragile at this stage. Not having the extra crew on the systems makes it a bit dangerous. So, let's keep moving and see if we can't ga garner any more goods. We're off to a pretty good start here so far. We arrive at the next beacon, only to be immediately hailed by an another small shuttle being attacked by pirates. Well, of course we're going to help them. We're here to save the day. Aid the civilian ship. Oh, Zoltan. We power up our weapons and engage the pirate ship. Well, we might be able to arc beam this guy. I don't actually know if that hurts them, though, which might make this a very tedious fight if I wait a whole 16 seconds to fire this and it doesn't do anything. I'm going to try anyway, though, so we're going to bolide rocket them in the shields just for maximum overlulls. Probably won't do much. Two ion damage is pretty good, though. It'll do four, actually, I think. No, only two. Of course, it can't pierce this shield, so it doesn't hit twice. We're going to arc... Oh, there goes most of our overshield. We're going to arc beam these guys right through here. As well, though, I should note, these guys can't actually hurt us at all. Because of the fact that they have a heavy laser and a mini beam, they can't get through our two shield defense. So it's a good thing we bought that, otherwise we'd be taking some damage right about now. So we'll fry them again with our arc beam, and then our next bolide rocket will be all we need to actually take these guys out, because they shouldn't be able to repair things quite quickly enough to stop us. Especially not if we set some good fires. Although, they probably... Mm, I don't know exactly how this is going to work. But we're going to try our best and hope for the best. Hooey. So, let's see if we can bolide them into next week. Hit them with a nice bolide rocket to the shields. Please hit. Awesome. And we're going to arc beam them. I really, really, really want to arc beam them in an interesting room like the weapons, but I can't reach that far. I could go for shields and helm, but I really need to put two fires in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit engines and shields and hopefully... Although we have... Mm, that's a good point. They have a rock man, so just burning them out isn't going to do anything. We have to really incapacitate them. So we're going to go oxygen, weapons, helm, I think. That's probably the best way to do it, and set some general fires. Because that way they'll be busy dealing with all the fires, will not probably fix the oxygen fast enough, and will be able to do some damage that way. It will cost us a couple extra missiles, though, and they will be preparing things incredibly quickly. 
Hopefully that gives this fire time to spread, though. That's what I'm counting on here. We have enough time to harass them, set a lot of different fires, and prevent them from putting out the things they really need to put out. If we set fire to the shields, they should both rush over there. This fire might spread into the weapons, which would be great, because that'll distract them again in a second. Once that happens, they won't go and fix the oxygen right away. They are fixing the shields really fast, though, which is going to cause us some problems. Good, the weapons are burning. That's good, that's good. That's what we want to see. Set the weapons and shields on fire again if we can. They're probably going to fix it, though, because they have an NG in there. Go, 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 go. Yes! Awesome. They got the other burn. We did some damage to the NG there with the arc beam. Looking pretty good. The air is depleting. We can kill them with the arc beam, too. Just directly firing on the Rockman. Although I'm not entirely sure how effective that'll be. And if he has enough time to repair the oxygen, which he probably will, that won't be great either. We can set it on fire again, which will stop him from repairing it while he's in there. Probably, yeah, it actually did force him out because he's worried about having low health. He's coming in here to try and fix the, this room, which now has no oxygen as well, and he's gonna die! That's what you get for different priorities. Ooh! No more life signs are detected on the pirate ship. We hasten to contact the civilians, gathering three fuel, two missiles, 22 scrap, and a pike beam. Don't know if we'll use this thing, but it's a pretty cool thing to find. We contact the civilian ship and find that the crew we saved was badly damaged in battle. Most of the crew accepts our offer to be dropped off at a nearby station, but one offers to join our crew, and we could always use more crew, so we happily welcome them aboard. The survivor comes on board. It's another... Really? Another Zoltan? Okay, well, I can't say no to that. Markand, you're going to take over the shields for now, I guess. We'll probably move Flux once we find anyone who isn't a Zoltan. But for now, we might as well take advantage of the extra power and be quite happy about it. So, we're going to buy ourselves an extra engine bar and use the free power we just got from our other, another Zoltan and stick it in there. Looking good. So, where we go next? We got a stress beacon over here. We got a bunch of beacons over here we can check out as well. This is actually quite good for us because if, no matter how long it'll take the uh, rebels to advance, we have a choice of jumps over here. I think we'll go to this one first, hit the distress beacon after that, and check it out. So, what do we get over at this beacon? Hopefully, some more goodies we can take. We detect a rebel scout on an attack approach to a small refueling outpost. The weapons are charged with an eye at firing. Well, time to intervene! Intervene and defend the outpost. The Rebel spawns to our threats, and they don't know who we are, but no one defies the Rebels. We'll see about that. They move in to engage. They have a repair drone, oh, that's going to be unfortunate, and an anti-personnel drone. Well, that's going to make things a bit more difficult for us. Because of the fact they have that repair drone, it's going to make our fires a lot less effective. But they don't have a med bay in there, so if we hit them enough, they're going to die eventually. So, bull-eyed rocket, into the shields. Please hit, please hit. I hate when that thing misses, because we're relying on it so heavily. We're going to fry them right through these rooms. We're going to try and get two shield rooms, if we can. An engine, two shields, and a weapons would be nice. That'll do. All right, go. That'll also fry two of their actual crew. Oh, no, only got one of them. But it's better than it... Well, it's not really better than it could have been. But it's not as bad as it could have been as well. So once they get that fixed, we're going to set some more fires in there. Probably in exactly the same spot, because they should get both of those... All of those, in fact, put out before we get a chance to burn them. Yes, there it goes. So set them on fire again. Ah, you thought you had us, but no, we had you, in fact. We're burning you to death with arc beams. Now, these guys should be unable to actually fix the shields at any point, apart from the fact that they have this drone in there. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. We are going to set some more fires in here, though, just to make sure that everything dies. So burn them. Burn them all. We'll set some fires right through there. Three fires in the shield room should prevent anyone from surviving that. Excellent. That drone's going to run around and repair things. We should have plenty of time to do this kind of stuff. We might just arc missile them, or rather, uh... Aurora mass cannon them, just so you can see what it looks like. But I think we'll hold off on that until we have to fight a drone again, and we can try that on them. Just so you can see what we're getting into here. Where's this guy going? I don't know where he's going. He's going to the helm, and now he's dead. That's what you get. With the crew dead, we salvage what we can, getting two fuel, two missiles, and 21 scrap. We're getting a really good, nice number of missiles here, because if we don't find missiles, we're going to be really hard-pressed to continue. The outpost we saved just hails us. The pompous bastards expected free service just because they defeated the Federation, they say. Take this for the help. You got it. Two fuel, 15 scrap. Definitely saying yes to those. We're also probably going to power up our engines soon again, but we'll leave that for now. So, what do we got? We got about two jumps left. Yeah. I'm not going to have enough time to check out all these places, but we can check out the Distress Beacon and see what they want. Hopefully it's something we can deal with, although given that we have entirely Zoltan, probably no, no blue options. Nah, we picked wrong. We find the number of ships fleeing from a small space station. We hail them asking what's wrong and find out they're being overrun by giant alien spiders, which we're not going to try and deal with. No, thank you. We can't risk fighting some unknown aliens in every backwater station we come across. That's too dangerous. We can, however, check out this exit beacon and see if there's anything good there. I kind of want to go here first, but we're just going to go to the exit and see if there's anything good, and then we get out of town. We have a ton of fuel and missiles already, so we don't really, really need much. We've arrived at the Long Range Beacon. Of course, we'll be able to jump out of here when we're charged, and we find a ship here known as a well-known slave trader. He hails us, offering us laborers for cheap. Unfortunately, he's also Zoltan, which makes this a bit more difficult for us. Also, the fact is, he has his hull beam, which is pretty nasty, and a dual laser, which means he might be able to, might be able to actually do some nasty damage to us. But, you know what? 
Never got anywhere but... Oh, really? We're one scrap short of the option of buying a crew? Not that I'd ever do that, because attacking them is generally better, but we're one scrap short of having the option. All right, let's attack this labor scum, despite the risk, and see what we can do. Oh, goodness, they have a beam drone. This was a mistake! This was a mistake indeed. We're going to have to take these guys out fast. All right, what we're going to do here is we're going to arc beam them, and we're going to... Oh, we can't even do multiple things here. <sighs> I don't know. We're going to turn off this. We're going to turn on the... Yeah. Sun Fury Rotary Auto Cannon. Most shots, most potential for damage. Actually, Aurora Mass Cannon. We haven't seen that one yet. It also fires pretty quickly, so it'll work out okay. We really need to hit them fast, though. Otherwise, we're going to get absolutely blasted by these guys. So, we're going to Volad Rocket them quickly in the shields. Maximum speed here. We oh, goodness. This is going to be bad. Please, shields, come back online. Good. All right. Aurora Mass Cannon them. We're going to hit them in the... I don't know. Shields. Doesn't matter. Fire! That's the Aurora Mass Cannon. It does three damage. Has a good chance of breaching and setting fires, but not guaranteed. Now we're going back to the Arc Beam, because that's what we're talking about here. That's where our firepower's hiding. And please don't take out our shields when you fire one of those beams. That'd be really nasty for us. Okay, we're lucky so far. Lucky so far. Power up the Arc Beam, get a chance to murder these guys. We're going to burn out their weapons really fast and their shields, which should make them pretty much sitting dead in the water. But we have to get lucky here. Oh, we didn't get lucky there. Fire at the shields. They're going to hit us nasty. Oh, only one damage. That's okay. And we're going to arc beam them right through these important rooms. Set both the weapon rooms on fire, I think, and three of the shield rooms. That should be pretty good. Yes, there we go. That's what we're talking about. These rock men will put the fires out fairly quickly, but we can do some serious damage before they'll be able to do any repairs. And now their weapons are burned out because they have a mantis trying to fix them. We should be fine. Next shot we're going to take out is going to make make sure we set those rooms back on fire and also take out their oxygen. Because if we can burn out their oxygen, they're doomed. They're actually doomed. So set more fires in there, do some damage to some of the Rockman and the Mantis. That should put him off. These guys are going to apparently change tactics, so don't worry about trying to fix their shields anymore, which works out quite nicely for us as well, because then we can focus fire on these guys and hit them directly with the Arc Beam, doing direct damage. Of course, they do have a ton of health, so it doesn't do a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. It'll speed up the process, because these guys are probably going to have to suffocate out. We might be able to Arc Beam them to death, depending on how long it takes us to actually do the damage, but we'll have to wait and see. They are repairing the weapons remarkably fast, though. So hit them with the Arc Beam again, take the system offline, and burn them. Burn them. Burn them all. There we go. The Mantis is dead. We've done some more damage to the Rockman. The oxygen is going to run out in these rooms soon or later, and they're going to start taking damage. One of the great things about it is that even if they do manage to repair the rooms which have taken this oxygen damage, all we have to do is hit them again, and they will immediately go out. So, let's kill off this guy hiding in the helm there, and our last Rockman. You have to wait till we can fire an Arc Beam at you before you eventually die. Oh, we'll get you sooner or later, though. We'll get you sooner or later. The Arc Beam is a great weapon. It's just amazing. It's just incredibly powerful. Incredibly powerful beam weapon. You don't need borders with this thing. You just murder everyone. It appears the slaves did not survive the fighting. We find their burnt bodies in the hold. Well, that's probably what we get from burning the entire ship and taking all the oxygen away. But before we strip the ship, we hear faint noises in the walls. We break off a latch and a slave falls out of, out of a hidden compartment, coughing. Once recomposed, the slave offers to join our crew. Missiles, drone part, 21 scrap. What's the bet? They're another Zoltan. Nope, we got a Mantis. Fantastic. Alright, Mantis, Brian, you are now our new pilot. Strange as that may be. Flux, you're taking over the engines. Excellent. We got an extra power bar from that too, which we're going to use to power up more engines. There we go. We have three Zoltan power bars this early in the game. Hard to complain about that kind of stuff. Brian, once we get someone to replace you on the helm, you'll probably join a boarding team once we get a teleporter. But for now, that'll do. All right, looking pretty good here. Let us jump out of town. Let's get out of here. We have two options, power-controlled sector or NG-controlled sector. We have a bunch of Zoltan, but those don't actually give us any options, and really, there's no reason to not go to the power-controlled sector, I don't think, at this point. We want to fight things, and that's the best place to go to do it. Also, the fact that these paths recombine in the middle so we can dodge the nebula if we feel like it, that works out great. So, power-controlled sector, here we come. Hopefully we find some lovely things to smash and utterly destroy here, because that'll be fun. A few Federation friendly fle, fle, fle. A few Federation friendly planets still exist in the sector, but they're constantly under attack by pirate raids, so this is a dangerous place. We'll have to be careful. Alright then. Well that should be fine. We got plenty of stuff going on here in our favor. I'd love to get a weapon that isn't rocket reliant though, or a beam. <laughs> Something we can use to take out shields that isn't, you know, this. Not that those weapons are bad, just that it's not entirely reliable. We could use our Pike Beam if we really wanted to, but it's not half as good as the Arc Beam, so we'll probably wait and maybe use it later. Maybe. We'll see. 34 Scrap. We could go to the store and just sell it, too. Hard to say exactly what the best choice is. Let's work our way around this way, though, and see if we can't get any goodies over there. So, what do we got? We got a ton of fuel and missiles. We're not too pressed on it at the moment. 
We find an especially well-armed pirate ship approaching us. They tell us that if we hand over one of our crew members, the rest of us can go free unharmed. And by especially well-armed, you mean they have an ion blast and a basic laser. And a single shield. I don't think you know what especially well-armed means. We're not gonna give a crew to the slavers. We'll never surrender one of our crew. We're gonna murder you. You don't even have a med bay. You have a Zoltan. You guys are gonna die so fast. So fast, you won't even know what hit you. But I tell you, it's us. We're gonna bull-eyed you in the shields, and it should be a lovely, lovely time. But we're gonna wait till our arc beams charge, because there's no point in wasting some of that ion time. All right, now we can fire it, and if it actually hits, we'll be quite happy. Perfect, perfect hit. We're gonna fire right through the weapons, the shields, and also the oxygen, meaning they're doomed. Absolutely doomed. Even if we don't kill them with a fire, or the beam, which we will, they're going to suffocate over time. So that works out great for us, because they can't actually get into that room to repair it. Set more fires with the arc beam, murder more people with the arc beam. There's no way they're repairing that thing in time to stop us from murdering them. And down they go. They have Zoltan dead already. Last person in here. Trying barely to put the fires, frantically to put the fires and the shields out. Dies horribly before he can. We find a number of slaves in the cargo hold. They look at us questioningly, and one asks if they're to be released. We could use more crew, but we don't want to force them all to work for us instead. Who do we demand joins us? It's, I don't know why it says demand instead of just ask. And request? I, I don't know. I don't know why not. Whatever. We can demand someone joins our crew. Who do we want? We could get another Mantis for future boarding party fun, except honestly we're setting every ship on fire, so I don't know how good that would be. A Rockman would be a good choice for that. He'd also be a good pilot until we actually have the opportunity to do it. And the Mantis would be a good on-ship defense. We could get an NG as well to do repairs or to do blue events with. But I think we'll go with the Rockman for the moment. They'll be the best later on if we can do boarding with them on a burning ship like that. And they'll be a good pilot for the time being. The Rockman remains silent, and we worry there might be trouble. However, when we ask him to perform a task, he asks without complaint. Perhaps he won't be a problem. That sounds oddly... He is just still a slave, isn't he? Three fuel, two missiles, and 31 scrap. Well, we are the rebels. All right, Ares. That's a really weird way of spelling Ares. I don't think I've ever seen that one. I, I, you know, I think that's interesting. I think it's a name I've never seen before. Huh. Despite playing like 250 hours of this game, I've never seen Ares. So, we will send our Mantis up to the med bay, which is, interestingly enough, a four-person med bay. This slot actually doesn't take up any space. And we'll stick our Rockman on the helm. I love Rockman on the helm because they don't have to move anywhere. They have a ton of health so they can sit there, and fires don't bother them. Great helmsman. All right, so what are we going to do next? Well, that's a question indeed. We have 65 scrap left. We could spend some of it, but I think we'll hold on to it and check out this distress beacon. Hopefully we'll get a nice blue option to use Ares. That'd be fun. What do we get going on over here? A ship without life forms within a nearby dense asteroid field is giving off the distress call. We can investigate, but it could be dangerous. Well, let's search for the ship despite the danger. What do we find? We find a pirate ship, damaged and abandoned. We salvage what we can and move on. Two missiles, a drone part, and 26 scrap. No crystal cruiser today, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. 91 scrap, what are we going to spend that on? Can't afford to hold on to all that. Let's boost up our engines again and get another cheap power bar. Since we have so many Zoltan, we have a ton of really cheap power, which is really nice. I should probably invest in level 2 doors, though, because if we're going to be trying to fight off borders here, having only level 1 doors is not great. Level 2 doors are quite nice for that regard, and we do have a pretty, pretty solid defenses at the moment. Level 5 engines with an engine crew now, shields. It's pretty good. I can afford to spend a bit of money boosting up the doors in case we get boarded. So that's what we'll do. We can check out this Distress Beacon as well, which is probably a good idea, so let's see what they want, and then keep moving. Can we help you there, guys? It appears that it's just speaking is coming from the surface of a nearby moon, where our sensors are picking up a single life form. Let's go down to the surface and investigate. There's no harm in doing so, and we might find something good. We found a colony that seems to have been recently attacked. Exploring the devastation, we find a lone survivor. We can invite him to join our crew, which would probably, probably be the best choice, get an extra crew member. Or we can take him home to his family on a nearby planet, which has two choices. It might give you, a well, three choices, I guess. A small amount of scrap, a large amount of scrap, or some repairs. The repairs won't help us, the scrap will. If we get him to join our crew, we don't have any more stations to him for him to man. I don't know if we really want him at the moment on our crew, but we could take him anyway and see what we get. If he's an NG, that would be good for more blue options. Another rock man would be good later for boarding actions. Let's invite him to join our crew and see what we get. He happily offers his services for a time in exchange for getting off that rock. His name's going to be Charlie. And what is he? He's a human. Well, you're boring, Charlie. I might have to kill you. I probably should have just... Uh should have just let you go. But I'll let you be our anti-border defense for now, because having two people is always better than having one for that. So that's actually pretty good. I can't really complain. I, I am complaining, but I shouldn't. <laughs> I'm being bad. Let's jump over here and explore a little bit more and see if we can't find any more goodies lying around. What's going on over here? Oh, Zoltan. Stop being Zoltan. Soon after arriving in the system, we're hailed by a small cruiser. What good fortune. We happen to run into each other, they say. Nothing personal. We have some information we need. Well, what do they got? They got a heavy laser and a basic laser. So they can't hurt us. We can take our time. 
I'm going to arc beam these guys to a shallow grave. It'll take us a while to get through that shield, but once we do, they are going to die for sure. There's nothing they can do about it. They cannot get through our level 2 shields, so we can take our time. So doing this slow, slow arc beam strategy, while a little bit tedious, isn't actually a problem. We can burn through them here. We'll consistently do 2 damage a beam like this, and that's fine by me. So, we'll have to put these guys to work at some point here, otherwise they'll get in a free ride, Brian and Charlie. But, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of want to put one of them in the helm, though, honestly. Because if we put one of them in the helm, like, I'll put Charlie in the helm, maybe. Because he can stay in the helm. Ares, if we ever get another Rockman or a Teleporter, I'm going to want to move out of the helm. And that's not going to work very well if he's our max level pilot. So I guess I'll send Charlie in there. If we find someone else to replace him, I'll probably swap him out. But for now, it might actually work out okay. So we'll leave it like that for now, and maybe he'll get some skill. Ares here has already leveled up a little bit, 4 out of 15, but that's not a big deal. What we are going to do, though, is we're going to bull rocket these guys in the shields and hopefully set them to murder. There we go. And pause. Now what we're going to do is... I think we'll burn engines and shields probably for the first salvo. That's a pretty solid strategy. That gets them... removes their ability to dodge and takes away their ability to actually defend themselves. Then we'll be able to arc beam them through the oxygen weapons and helm once they start to defend themselves. They might be able to get their shields back up, but odds are they'll die from the damage at this point anyway. So, set more fires, there we go, killed that guy off. He's actually getting burned again because this fire restarted. That's not going to work out too well for him. And the fire is spreading throughout the rest of his ship. So even if he does fix the shields, he's still going to die. And if he doesn't burn to death fast enough, well, we can always arc beam him to death. He's probably going to start to run just before we fire this thing, though. No, we actually fixed it. Well, congratulations. For your rewards, you get burned. Now their ship has been emptied of hostiles, we search it. Like finding another prisoner, what do you know? 17 scrap and Kara, another rockman. Perfect! Now we need that teleporter and we'll be ready to absolutely wreak havoc! With two rockmen and the ability to uh, board a burning ship, we will be so set here. I guess I'll send them over to this side of the ship for now, though, because we have a mantis on that side. I don't think it really matters where they are, though. Eh, whatever. We'll stick them over there for now. Just somewhere to stand. Actually, well, I think we'll set one in the oxygen and one in the radar. So we have someone in these rooms. If they get hit, we'll have immediate repairs started. That sounds probably a little bit, but a little bit smarter. There's another store over there, which we could go to check out and see if we can get ourselves some uh, teleporters. We don't have the money to buy them anyway, so we're not going to worry about it. We'll keep jumping and see what we can do. See what we can do. And they blocked our engines. Once we arrive, our screen lights up with warnings. A nearby pirate has advanced hacking tools and have tried to shut down our engines. We keep them barely operational and move in for the attack. Alright, well that's not great. They got bombs and Burst Laser Mark II's. It's a great setup for getting through our systems. So what we're going to do here is go for the kill. We're going to power up the the uh, Sunfire Rotary Auto Cannon, I guess. It has a pretty good chance of missing, though, which is not great. We have an extra shot in there anyway, so it's okay. We'll bull eyed Rocket them and Sunfire Rotary Auto Cannon them, and that will give them something to remember, I'm sure. bull eyed Rocket them in the shields. I guess we should do the Bolide second, because that'll do some actual ion damage to their real shields. So we're going to Sun Fury them in the shields here. Hopefully these all hit. There we go. All hits. And the bomb knocked out our Zoltan shield completely. That's unfortunate. It looks like a small bomb, though, so it's not too scary. Turn off the SRAC. Turn on the Arc Beam. And once we fire the Bolide rocket, we should knock out their shields and their real shields, which means we're going to wait until the Arc Beam is ready so we don't have to charge the Bolide twice and waste a shot. This should work out okay, although I'm not guaranteed. They hit us in the doors in an empty room. The empty room's not a big deal, but I will go fix our doors just for fun. Ares, get in there and fix that thing. Bolide rocket them in the shields right now. Please hit. You got to hit. You got to got it. Yeah. Knock them out exactly like I hoped we would. Now, I'm actually going to go and do something silly this time. I'm going to burn them in these rooms because we want to make sure those weapons stay down right now. Set them on fire. We do not want them hitting us with anything else. The fires might not be enough to take them out at the moment, and the shields are going to come up again, so we are going to have to waste another rocket anyway. But we'll have to wait and see how they deal with these fires first, because if they don't stop them from spreading into the shields, we might not have to deal with it at all. Although it looks like they're fine. Yeah, okay, we have to bolide them again. Hit them in the shields, then we should be able to burn out their shields before they get a chance to finish repairing the weapons, and they should prioritize the shields more highly. So that works for us. Not quite as ideal as it could have been. We did wind up wasting the second rocket after all. Well, it wasn't wasting it. We did wind up having to use it after all. But at least we didn't take any more damage because we were able to knock out those weapons nice and quickly. Now we're going to make sure that Mantis dies. You're going down there, chum. Burn. There we go. And this guy's going to die as well from the looks of things. Yes, there he goes. With the power chip disabled, our engines come back online. We salvage two fuel and 20 scrap from the ship and prepare to move on. All right. All right. Could have been worse. Could have been much, much worse. This is a pretty fantastic crew we've got going on here. It's crazy how many people we got already. This is Sector 2. We have six people. Seven people? Seven people. Sector 2. Madness. 
Debris from a forgotten battle still orbits the gas giant in this system. Some of it might still be usable, so we gather a fuel, a drone part, and 18 scrap. Looking good. Looking good. Now we're going to run out of space over here, I think. But we're going to do the best we can anyway. Jump everywhere and then probably run out close to the right amount of time. We arrive to have a small fleet of NG ships target us with a message. Piracy results in negative societal impact. Not permitted. We assure them of our honest intentions, and they allow us to pass. Well, they're gullible. <laughs> That's fine, though. I don't know why they're here in a pirate sector, though. I think they'd be, uh, maybe somewhere where there's, you know, a little less piracy, but whatever. We follow the distress beacon to a small asteroid belt, where we find a small ship struggling to maneuver through the field. They message us, saying that their shields are down and they don't know how much longer they can last. Well, we could try and shield their ship with ours and escort them out of the field, or leave them to their fate. But we're good people. We're gonna try and help them. We're probably gonna take some damage for this, but we'll do it anyway. Yes, despite our best efforts, the civilian ship breaks apart from the constant barrage. We're barely able to break out of the asteroid field ourselves. The ship sustains some damage in the process, but we do gather 12 scraps. That kind of pays for it. Down to 6 damage taken. Not too bad. Alright, we got to exit over here. we got some more beacons to jump to. Let's check them out and see what we get. What's going on over here? Some good, I hope. An especially well-armed pirate crew approaches us. Hand over one of your crew members and the rest of you can go free unharmed, they say. Well, they got a mini-beam and an ion weapon. I'm not scared. We will never surrender one of our screw to the slavers. They literally can't hurt us. Again. <laughs> Why are these all incredibly well-armed pirate ships have no weapons that can actually do any damage? They also have no med bay, so we're going to blast them into next week when we actually hit them with these fire weapons. I would love to get something that didn't take a missile to do ion damage, though. That would be really nice. Alright, we're going to burn them through these core rooms, I think. We'll go through there. That looks pretty good. I should set a couple fires for them, keep them distracted. For some reason, he looks not interested in putting out the ones in the shields, which is kind of weird. But that's okay, I don't mind. Next up, we're going to burn them in the weapons, not that it really matters, and then we'll take them out. They should have no options at this point. Take out their oxygen as well, so the a rock man will eventually start to suffocate if we can't kill him directly, which we know by now we totally can. But we're going to do it like this anyway. So, these guys are apparently really focused on putting those oxygen fires out, but I don't think that's going to happen there, guys. It's not going to happen. Nope. I'm going to wait, though. They're probably going to move again. No, they've actually got it fixed. All right, well, I'm going to burn them again, so they can't do that right away. The Mantis has run over the helm, but the fire should spread into there eventually, and that should deal with that. Zoltan has now died as well, which is great. And oxygen is running out across the ship, which is even better. So the Rockman looks like he's trying to fix the shields again. We can't have that either. So we'll set some fires in there and burn them with the arc beam while we're at it. There we go. You're dead. He actually walked across two panels there, so we hit him with the arc beam damage twice, which is pretty cool. The fire should spread into here before it starts to go out, but it might not. No, it looks like it isn't. Alright, that's okay. We can just arc beam him directly. Bye-bye, Mantis. It's time for you to feel the wrath of the Incursor. Now, the thing is... Okay, here we go. It appears the slaves did not survive the fighting. We find their burnt bodies in the hold, but before we strip, strip the ship, we hear faint noises in the walls. We break off a latch, and a slave falls out of a hidden compartment, coughing. Once recomposed, the slave offers to join our crew, getting three fuel, a missile, and 27 scrap as well. Alright. The thing is, this ship looks pretty overpowered right now, because we've been doing so fast. Really? Another Mantis, too? This is so powerful. It's insane. Two Mantis, two Rockmen, three Zoltan. Once we get this thing going, we're going to have an amazing boarding party, an amazing defensive party. A pilot could be better, but three Zoltan as well? It's really hard to complain about any of this. This is amazing. Two things to say about this ship. One thing, we got incredibly lucky with our crew so far, which is really hard to complain about. And the second thing is that while we do start with all these weapons, they're really weak against certain situations. Like if uh, different weapon loadouts had happened, we could have gotten absolutely trashed by some of those Zoltan ships. If we had fought a whole bunch of drones, we'd have been in other hard times. If we hadn't gotten so lucky with rockets, we'd have been in hard times. Basically what I'm saying is, it's actually really hard. <laughs> you should try the ship out though, it's pretty cool. The incredible dependence on rockets makes you play a very different way than normal. You really have to try and save them. So hopefully we'll be able to jump over here and back to the exit. I don't know if we can actually make that jump, but we're going to take the risk anyway, because why not? Why not? And we jumped into an asteroid belt. Oh boy. A power chip lying in wait inside this asteroid field immediately moves in to attack us. Alright, they got Artemis missiles and a dual laser. That's really bad actually for us. We're going to need to do some nasty bolide missiling jobs to them. Also, once we take out their shields, they're going to get absolutely trashed by those asteroids. So these guys might actually die rather than just being... Well, the ship might actually die rather than just being burned to death. Please don't kill us. Please don't... Oh, goodness, my oxygen. All right, get in there and fix the oxygen, please. And bolide them in the shield. Thanks. Yes, thanks. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Also, time to burn them. All right, so the fires. The fires are going to do all kinds of fun things. We're going to burn them through the weapons, the helm, and two stages, maybe two stages, one stage of the weapons, two stages of shields, two stages of weapons, one stage of shields, two stages of weapons, one stage of shields, go! Bzzzt. 
they have a bunch of energy in there, so they repair things quite quickly, but they're also getting pummeled by asteroids, which makes it even more fun. Now, they're going to get those engines repaired really fast. Thankfully, the weapons are really badly burned. They also have a med bay working, though, which is not great. And those shields are going to be back online unless an asteroid hits? No. The fire might spread back in there if we're lucky, though. Doesn't look like we will be, though. No. Oh, yes, perfect. Go, burn, yes. They said that hey, we have bested them, and they request their lives, offering us some various items. The missiles are fairly appealing. The scrap's not bad. But we're not going to accept their surrender. We can easily kill them at this point. Especially because their shields are down, which means the asteroid belt will kill them far before we have the opportunity to. I probably could have afforded to just blast out these rooms, but they'd repair them much too quickly, so I figured I'd just go for the kill. Bye bye, Rock Scout. Hopefully they give us something good. The ship explodes, giving us two fuel, drone part, and 19 scrap. <clears throat> well, I guess that's not quite better than the, uh... <clears throat> Excuse me. I need a drink there. Not quite better than the missiles we could have originally been offered, but whatever. Doesn't really matter. Two fuel, drone part, 19 scrap. Definitely taking it. We have 124 scrap, which I should spend, but we're going to jump back to the exit first and get out of town before we get locked in here, and then we can deal with it next episode. What we got going on here? The long-range beacon? What do we find? A ship refueling station stationed here. We can purchase fuel from them. Oh, really? A ship refueling station purchases fuel? Well, that's great. Well, we could buy some. It's really cheap here. It's basically... Uh, want two, two scrap each at any level of these, so it doesn't really matter which one you pick. We have a ton of fuel already, but we might run out later. There's no reason to not take this because it's such a good deal. So we'll buy their cheap fuel. Thank you for your business there, friend. And we're going to get out of here. So jump to the next sector. We have two options, rebel controlled or civilian sector. And while I'd love to go to the rebel controlled sector, we're actually going to go to the civilian sector because that'll give us the choice of the nebula beacon or this red beacon next. And we're probably going to want to go to the red beacon because nebula beacons suck. So, civilian sector it is. Let's head over there and see what we find. Hopefully all manner of good things. We find ourselves in a new sector. We have to get to the exit beacon and jump to the next sector before the rebels can catch us. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to wait till the next episode for that. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor so far here, playing through on the VSS Archon, part of Kiev's uh, Incursor Cruiser mod. This is only, of course, one of them. It's a standalone section of it, but it's pretty darn cool, and you should check it out. If you've enjoyed the episode so far, don't forget to like the episode. We've been incredibly lucky here, which is great, and hopefully that continues later on. This has been, like I said, Vanguard of Valor. One more time, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.